Hey guys, this is Jay from TDB bringing you in between episode number 111. Again, we are doing another extended in between episode. So when I do these, it may be one every other week. I may take a break uh, just because these tend to be a little bit more involved, a little bit more going on. Um, so this week, uh, I am showcasing a pair of Yunnan sourcing teas. Um, and we're going to go to a screen capture right now where I'm going to explain a little bit more. And I think this episode in particular uh, reflects the buying patterns that I've sort of gravitated towards as I bought more and more tea. Uh, so uh, here we are uh, doing the screencast. So uh, as you can see, we are on yunonsourcing.com. I'm sure, especially for a lot of you poor people, um, this is a site that you're um, somewhat familiar with already. Um, so Yunon sourcing, big challenge to shop here for a new shopper. Just so many different teas. Um, you can see the new products over here poor tea where it doesn't even list the amount of tea because it's so damn many. Uh, 200 different ripe pours, 450 raw pours, uh, 231 Yunnan sourcing brand pours. Um, so, so many teas, um, lots of samples, lots of full cakes. Um, it's hard to decide where to start. Um, and so I think this sort of category of tea has sort of been reflected uh, in my own drinking and I've begun to shop more and more for these sorts of teas rather than for really young teas. Um, so uh, this is a new category on Yunnan sourcing and I was happy when Scott created this category. Um, so it's Guangdong or Bana stored poor teas. So Yunnan sourcing of course is mainly based in Yunnan in Kunming uh, in particular and so Kunming is known to have drier storage um, some people like it, um, others prefer tea that, you know, develops a little bit more quickly with more humid climate. So you can sort of see here, um, Scott describes wet stored pours. Um, his background is in Kunming and uh, Yunnan stored teas. So generally speaking, um, he will um, choose teas that are not at all overly wet, I would say. Um, so Guangdong is in Southeast China. Um, it's close to Hong Kong, and so it has a very hot and humid climate. Shishuang Bana is an area where tea is grown, but it's also, and it's actually in Yunnan as well, but it's actually much more hot and humid than Kunming. So the tea will generally age faster or mature faster in those areas. So you can see there's a whole lot of teas here, 45 in total. Um, these are uh, mainly raw pours, it looks like. I think uh, it looks like we do have some ripes in here as well. Um, and generally speaking, these cakes tend to be larger. Um, so here is a good one. Denny and I reviewed this one a while back, uh, the 2005 Monku Wild Arbor. Um, so you could take a look and you could take a look at the leaves and you could tell, generally speaking, these leaves are gonna be much darker uh, than, for instance, some of the teas that have been stored in Kunming. Um, so this has been like one of the areas where I like to shop. You can see that it's $58 for a cake, um, but you, most of these you'll find samples are available. So $6 for a sample. Um, so the two teas that I'm going to be looking at today are the Songpin Hao Iwu. Uh, Songpin is one of those old brands. Uh, this is the modern uh, modern Songpin, which is very different from the uh, 100, 200 year old factory. Uh, <clears throat> but it's a aged Iwu tea that was stored in Jinghong. Uh, Jinghong also is in uh, Shishuang Bana. It is the uh, county in between Menghai and Mengla. Uh, and the other tea is this Gupur. Uh, so it's a small label tea, <clears throat> and it has like a picture of this map here. Uh, and it has been aged for 12 years in Guangdong. So again, um, humid-ish conditions uh, for that. Uh, and you can also see that these leaves generally look pretty dark as well. Um, so uh, I think with a lot of these teas, especially as cake sizes have gotten smaller and smaller, it's important to calculate the price per gram. Um, so for this tea, it is simply, uh, it's about 20 cents per gram for this Gupur. Uh, for this song pen, uh, which comes out to 64, uh, it should be just a touch cheaper. So that's 18 cents per gram approximately. <clears throat> so for instance, a 200 gram cake of this is um, 
$36 for a 200 gram cake. So really important to that conversion uh, because I think a lot of these teas will compare more favorably when we take into account the quantity of tea that you are getting um, per bing. All right, so that's enough about these teas. Let's uh, take a quick look at the dry leaf. We can take a look. We're gonna take a quick look at the um, dry leaf of these teas. Um, so an easy way to sort of detect uh, the storage of teas is to give it a quick smell. Um, so smelling this, uh, you could smell more youthful flavors, but because uh, aroma doesn't necessarily translate um, into uh, smelling uh, in, into video, or it doesn't translate at all, I should say, um, we're gonna take a visual look. So this is a reference cake. This is the 2010 Autumn e -Bong. So it's long enough that it could have uh, gotten darker and stuff like that. Uh, so we can see here, uh, also from Yunnan sourcing, uh, it's generally pretty light looking, uh, decent. You still get some florals and stuff like that off of that tea. So here we have the Song Pin Hao. Uh, so some Iwu Pur. Uh, and let's uh, dump this out and take a quick look. keep this separate and so you can see that visually um, this chunk right here is just much darker than uh, the cake for instance so it's uh, and that's somewhat indicative of the storage and, and that the tea has continued to develop so we have our song pin hao here in this corner uh, and then here is the gupur uh, cha mu uh, gudao, uh, cha ma gudao, uh, ma means horse, uh, and dao means go, cha means teeth, so horse road, uh, translation right there with my very amateurish Chinese. So you can see here, also looking very dark um, in comparison to this, and maybe even a shade darker than the song pin. So it may have been uh, a little bit more humanly stored at one point. Um, of course, there are a lot of different factors that will go into the actual color of the tea. Some tea uh, leaves are just naturally uh, darker and there are obvious other examples such as purple pour, um, which has a different shade in the leaf. But these are some ways that you can help to sort of like visually see the difference in the humidity that the tea has been stored at. All right, so we are going to move on uh, to actually tasting these teas. We are on to the tasting portion of this episode because we are doing two teas. I am using two identical gaiwans picked up locally here in Seattle. So here on my left, I have the 2004 Songpin stored in Jinghong. And here on my right, uh, the 2004 uh, Gupur uh, Chama Gudao, um, which was stored in Guangdong. I have given them both a rinse. I've drank in a couple steeps of the Songpin. Going to start with that. Uh, I have the third infusion right here and the fourth infusion. Uh, all of the infusions have sort of brewed up a color similar, similar to this. Um, so it's sort of a golden uh, color that's um, not yellow like a young poor, not really translucent, or but also not red. Uh, and uh, we're going to take a quick smell of these leaves. Uh, the leaves have a lot of stems and stuff. You would expect that from uh, Iwu or areas around Iwu. So still some florals, fruity um, wood, uh, and here is steep number three. Cheers, guys. It's soft, it's smooth, there's a decent body. There's a little bit of smoke in this tea. There's a little bit more in the initial two infusions that originally caught me off guard. Generally, these more humid stored teas will tend to get rid of those notes a little bit faster. Some people like the smoke, others don't. Uh, here, it's pretty light, honestly. It's much lighter, for instance, than the uh, Zhu Yin Yo uh, that I had uh, in uh, the previous in between episode, I think. Um, so. Wood, um, 
the obvious comparison to this um, is to the ancient spirit that Yunnan sourcing also offers um, that's sold in 2002. Supposedly also in Iwu tea. And I think the teas are relatively similar. This sort of has a um, grapey wood vibe uh, going on in this too. Um, and ancient spirit, a the ancient spirit also has some woody notes to it. Um, I think the ancient spirit has a little bit more depth and a little bit more going on um, in the back of the mouth. Um, at least that's my original take of it. And I think it has a little bit more of a backbone to it. I think this is a little bit softer, maybe a little bit smoother. Um, here's the here's the fourth infusion. Sweet, um, sweet initially, maybe a tiny bit of uh, bitter uh, that's in it. If this tea could definitely be overbrewed, um, if I, for instance, hit this for about forty five seconds right now, I think it'd be um, a little bit too much. For instance. I mean, just a nice combination of florals, wood, uh, and uh, fruit to it. So a nice, rich tea, um, and I uh, recommend a sample to anyone that's sort of interested in Iwu uh, older older teas. Uh, it's a good value. Um, it's soft. It's easy to drink. Um, it tastes. It's it's clearly not the most amazing material, but it's good and. There's significant age to this as well, and it's relatively clean. So I really can't complain too much for the, about this tea at this price. All right, so let's move on to the next tea. Chesting the Gupur. Uh, I have done the exact same thing as the Songpin. So I have had one steep, um, or I have my third and my fourth infusion right in front of me. Um, we're going to take a smell of the leaves right here. So it's a really sweet aroma, um, some earthiness, some raisins, some fruits. Um, it's not nearly as floral as the Songpin. Songpin has uh, definitely more um, of a certain smokiness to it as well uh, that I'm not picking up in uh, up on in the uh, uh, the Gupur. It's also from 2004, uh, and uh, let's uh, have a sip. So this is immediately thicker. Um, it has more of a interesting mouthfeel, I think, than the uh, other tea. It's a richer form. Um, it does taste similar to how it smells. Um, it's got a darker form to it, so notes of um, raisins, uh, dark, darker raisins, I would say, um, leather, uh, maybe a bit. Um, it's really thick and sort of like the middle of the mouth. Um, again, uh, this tea has maybe a bit more thickness towards the back of the mouth than the uh, Songpin does. And very sweet. Um, it's sweet immediately when you're drinking it. Uh, not much bitterness to this, although I'm sure you could fix that if you brewed it heavy. And the sweetness lasts in the mouth as well. And let's go in to do one more of this as well. Yeah, so really rich. Um, I, I like the richness and the mouthfeel to this uh, a bit better. So right now, if I were to pick one of these two teas to buy, I would pick this guy. And I think in terms of, uh, I think the song pin is certainly worth the sample. And especially if you're a fan of Iwu teas, uh, try it and try the Ancient Spirit as well. That's, uh, I guess, what I would pick as far as those teas. I think that goes for $87. It's a little bit slightly larger cake as well. I think 380 if I'm recalling correctly. So um, slightly more price per gram, but it's really in the same price range as both of these teas. Um, cheers, guys. So decent, very decent um, body to this. Uh, and 
Uh, this is a really solid daily drinker. Um, it's not, um, it doesn't get me crazy energized or anything like that, but it's smooth, it's easy to drink. Um, there's a reasonable, reasonable amount of complexity in terms of mouthfeel and stuff like that uh, to keep me interested. And I'm just gonna have this uh, final steep as well. So we can see that this color is a little bit deeper, a little bit darker uh, than the song pin, which is brewing more of a gold. This is um, maybe orange on the way to being red, I would say. I'm also, uh, I also realize that I am not the best judge of color because I am partially colorblind. Uh, so you guys can correct me on the video if I uh, am seeing colors that you guys are not. Um, cheers. So thicker, this brew is definitely bringing out a little bit of bitterness. You guys saw on camera that I brewed it a little bit longer um, than the flash steep of the previous ones. Yeah, and I, and I think I definitely could have kept the steep time uh, short for that as well. Um, so it's leaving a little bit of bitterness on the palate before it sort of transforms. Uh, this tea is, I believe, from the Samao or uh, the Pu'er Prefecture, uh, which is in, be in between Linchang and, uh, and uh, Shishuang Bana. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think that concludes the tasting of these. And we are going to take a quick look at the wet leaves of both of these before we wrap this in between the soda. We're taking a look at the wet leaf, uh, final part of this uh, episode. Uh, so here on the left, we have the song pin. Uh, and here on the right, we have the, uh, the uh, Gupur. Um, so you can see, uh, just taking a look at the leaves, these are not really pale green leaves or, or light green leaves, like, or even olive green leaves like you'll see in uh, current year productions. Um, these leaves have definitely darkened over time, which sort of confirms what we're looking at in the dry leaf. Um, so you can see that the song pin, it has sort of like a darker, green tint to it, and looking over here uh, at the uh, 2004 Gupur tea, uh, this is more of a light brown, I guess, to it. Uh, so that might indicate that the Gupur um, was stored in slightly more humid conditions. Uh, both, by my estimates, uh, taste very clean, so no complaints from me about either tea. Uh, and uh, so uh, from these wet leaves, you could sort of see how the storage goes. Um, so if a tea was extremely dry stored in Kunming or something like that, uh, the leaves should look, uh, assuming that the base material is similar, um, considerably lighter or greener than these teas go. Um, whereas if these teas were stored more humid, and they certainly could have been stored more humid, um, they may brew a really dark, or may look like a really dark brown, um, or even close to a black if it was stored in a bathtub, for instance. Um, so I think that just about concludes this in between episode. Let me know how you guys liked this episode. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it or learned something out of it. Um, so another extended in between episode. Let me know how you like it, if you prefer that I just do the normal episodes, or if you like this sort of change of pace. Uh, and thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time.